Hi, this is Federico with Cuddle, and the goal of this video is to get you up and running making Cuddle templates. So I'm going to show you how to make this simple template with some engraved text. I'll be showing you how to create the customizable text that always fits inside of your design, and I'll show you some other tips and best practices for publishing Cuddle templates. To get started here on the Cuddle site, I'm going to go to my projects and then create a new blank project by clicking this plus sign. I'm going to give it a name by clicking here on top and I'm going to call it the round tag. So the idea is that I want a simple round tag with a name engraved in the middle. So I'm going to create that real quick by grabbing a circle. I'm going to make that circle two inches. That's probably the size that I want. Um, I'm going to make this stroke red because that's going to be a cut. And then I want a circle for the hole um, where the tag is going to be hung. So I'm going to grab another circle and I'm going to make it uh, 0.19 inches and probably move it up a tiny bit. So that's going to be the base for my design. And I'm going to just name that component the tag. So what I want is some text that fits exactly inside of the circle. So I'm going to search for fit text um, or fit within, and I'm going to grab it and place it on the center of the canvas. The way this one works is that any text that I type is going to fit inside of the rectangle. So I'm going to change the size of the rectangle to fit inside of my circle. So I'm going to grab those handles and make it fit. So regardless of the length or uh, size of the text, it's going to fit inside of that. So I'm going to type my own name to uh, check. So you'll see how it, um, it adapts to that. And let's try it out with a smaller name, uh, for example, uh, Lynn. So I kind of want it to fill as much area inside of the circle as possible. So I'm going to change this scaling option down here to grow. So that makes it kind of uh, occupies as much space. Um, and then let's choose a font that is kind of appropriate for this kind of thing. So I'm going to select the font. And I like the handwriting type fonts. And I'm going to start with this uh, September. I think that one has a kind of cool, interesting look. And because I want this text to be engraved, I'm going to give it a fill. So I'm going to select it and check the fill option. And in general, if it's an engraving operation, we like to give it a black fill uh, specifically. Um, one last thing, because I'm using a handwriting uh, font here and there's some overlap, I actually want it to be welded. So I'm going to scroll down here on the font options and there is a, a welding option. So I'm going to select weld everything. The next step is to make it function like a template. Um, so we need to get some parameters. And the first parameter I want to extract is the text. So I'm going to go here to the three dots on the right hand side of the text. And there is an option that says extract as parameter. And so now that shows up here. And I can actually change the name of this parameter. So I'm going to simply call it the name. The next thing I want to do is to make this parameter into a project parameter. So I'm going to uh, select the three dots here. And there's an option that says move parameter to project. Now, regardless of what I have selected in my editor, uh, I can type any name here and it should affect this particular um, text. The other parameter I want to extract is the font choice. So I'm going to go back to this text and I'm going to do exactly the same on the font. I'm going to go to the three dots and then extract as parameter. So I can see it right here. And I'm also going to move this one to the project. Now to present it as a template, I need to go to the readme section. And the readme starts as a blank page. And so the first thing we can add is the component that we created. So I'm going to click here on the component and then add that one. So as you can see, the parameters we extracted are the only thing that the user is going to see. Uh, so here we can change the name again. Um, and then we can change the font to you know any other font that we want. But it's always nice to make it a little bit more presentable. So I'm going to start by adding a cover image. So here, when I'm typing anything, I can press Enter to get this option and then select Image. And I'm just going to grab a thumbnail that I created. Um, one thing to know about this particular image is that it needs to be 16 by 9. Those are the proportions. And we want to also add a description. So I can type any text uh, that I want here. So you know, I can type something like, this is a round tag. The text that you type here below the image is the one that's going to show up as a description in the Explore page. And if you want to see how the final user is going to see your template, you can click here where it says Switch to Simplified View, which gets rid of the panel on the left-hand side. 
And so this is what the template is going to look like. So as you can see, it's a very simple page with just the uh, necessary options here to uh, change what you want. One thing that is really nice to give the final user of the template is some recommended fonts because it allows you to choose some fonts that you think look really good with your design. So here on the font, we can go to this menu and then add this particular font to recommend it. And then let's say we want, we want to add other fonts. So let's search in the handwriting category. Let's say I like this one as well. So uh, with that one selected, uh, go ahead to the same menu and add font to recommend it. Let's add three fonts just to have some examples. And I'm going to add the last one, which is, yeah, that one looks good. So I can go to add font to recommend it. Now, if I go look at the readme and I switch to simplified view, you'll see how that is presented. Whenever you click on the font to change it, the first thing that shows up are those three recommended fonts that we added. But of course, the user can choose any other font that they see fit. One last thing I want to add is how to change the file name that gets downloaded every time. Right now, uh, if I hit download, you'll see that the file name uh, simply takes the name of the project and the name of the component. And if I change anything here, like my name, for example, um, if, I, if I download it again, it's the same name. So sometimes that's not convenient if you're downloading multiple files and you, wanna, you want them to be differentiated. So let me show you how to do that. So let's go back to the editor and uh, clear those changes. And here in the component that gets downloaded, I need to add a parameter. So I'm gonna create a new parameter and this parameter needs to be named specifically like this, underscore file name. And we want this file name to be a string. So I'm gonna type it like this. So I'm gonna say my tag and that's gonna change the download file name. So for example, if I go here and hit download file, you'll see that now it's named my tag. But that doesn't really add the convenience that I mentioned before. I actually want the name that I typed to be also in the file name. So let's go back and add that. So here I can actually reference any parameter. Um, so I need, I need to type something like this. So I want to reference the name parameter. So I'm going to add it here. And so let's test it now. So if I go to the readme and then I hit download, you'll see that it includes the name Lin. And if I uh, type any other name, see it. Now it includes my name. So that's how you uh, modify the file name for the download. Now let me show you some examples of templates that use text in creative ways to give you a sense of the possibilities. On the very simple side of things, there are these garden markers where you can engrave some text on a very simple shape. And of course, you can customize it by typing anything you want here. I like this tic-tac-toe gift uh, template because it shows you an example of how you can get creative with other elements and have the text within box feature that you can uh, change right here. In this photo frame template, the text gets placed here at the bottom so you can incorporate a nice message. So I hope that was a helpful overview and gets you excited about building your own Coddle templates. Thank you so much for watching.